Let's uh, shift to a more pleasant discussion. Medyo baka sabihin nyo, off naman si ito yung uh, next interview mo kasi personality interview. Pero still related because he is a, he is a doctor, he is a physician, the first Filipino to complete the World Marathon Challenge. He is a eye surgeon and president and chairman of the Cebu Doctors Group of Hospital. Kasi po, eh, itong mga interview namin, matagal namin pinaplano, matagal namin nilaline up. Eh, natapat na. Ngayon natapat. Eh, kalahin ko bang dadating itong uh, bagyong uh, Ulysses. Eh, yun nga dalawang uh, ating mga disaster officials sa uh, Aurora and Cam uh, Camarines Norte. Wala, hindi na namin makonek. So let's go to Dr. Potenciano Yong Larazabal III. Uh, and let's find out more about uh, being a doctor. Dr. Yong, good morning. Hi, good morning, Sito. Good morning. Okay, thank you for uh, entertaining our request for this interview. Kasi, alam mo, nakwento ka sa akin ng kaibigan kong si Willie Sung. At sabi niya na record holder ka raw na you completed marathon in ilang continents ba yun? You're an eye surgeon, you're an eye, uh, you're car enthusiast. Sabi ko, ilang taon na ba yan? Abay, akala, I was expecting someone 70 kasi yung edad ni Willie Sung. Eh, bata-bata mo pa. Yeah, um, I did the. I'm yeah, I'm 50 years old. Um, I did the World Marathon Challenge last February lang. That's an extreme challenge where you, you run seven marathons in seven continents in seven days. So you, we take one plane, and then the seven continents, of course, includes Asia, um, Oceania, Europe, mm -hmm. South America, North America, and of course Antarctica. Oh, okay, so seven continents in seven days. Hindi naman siguro seven days consecutive yun o sunod-sunod na seven days. Eba, eh, mas mabilis ka pa kay Superman kung ginawa mo yun in seven days straight, no? Putol-putol uh, naman yun. Yes, no, no, that's continuous. Actually, the, the, once you start the first marathon, the clock will start ticking already, 126 hours. So okay. after the first marathon... We, we take a quick shower. Sometimes we don't have shower anymore. Then we go to the airport, ride the same plane, and then go to another continent straight, no? From mm -hmm. 15 to 17 hours. Then when, like example, from Africa, then we go to Australia. And oh. That thing's Australia naman, a bus picks us up, go to the marathon site, and then we start running again. Then after the, the last runner comes in, we go straight to the airport na naman, and then head to another continent. So, sunod-sunod siya talaga eh. Consecutive. Oh. Okay. So, but this is not a time-based marathon, meaning uh, you're not gunning for a record time. Kumbaga, ano, ang plano, correct ba yung assumption ko? Ang plano is just to complete the marathon and then get out and get onto the plane again. <clears throat> um, each marathon, there's a limit of around six hours. So, everybody mm. has to finish within six hours, no? There was one time that we were very short on time sa, sa Spain, sa Madrid, na everyone had to finish between 5.15 to 5 hours and 30 minutes. Oh. So it's really time-based pa rin, no? There are others who finish faster than the others, pero 6 hours is the limit. If you're beyond 6 hours, then you're deemed that you could finish that continent na. Mm -hmm. uh, is this a spectacular... Pasensya ka na, Dr. Yong, ha? Dr. Larazabal. Uh, I, I, I disdain marathons. I cannot run. I have a destroyed hamstring. So talagang uh, pag sinabi mong marathon, eh, ewan. Uh, pero uh, yan bang uh, mga marathon na yan? I mean, what what do you get out of it? Um, like me, um, I went into running because of stress from work. No, um, I run seven Ooh. hospitals now. So it's when I get to train and run by myself that I get ideas and solutions to problems that I encountered. And after mm. running, I can sleep better at night as well. No? So basically, mm -hmm. the, the race at itself is like the icing on the cake. But the running, the training, for me, that's the most enjoyable stuff. No? And mm -hmm. every marathon, kasi, when you finish a marathon per country, um, that's an accomplishment. And then once you do that regularly, like me, I've done 69 marathons already, you look for further challenges, no? Some naman, they run the Mount Everest marathons. And then this is one of the uh, 
one of the extreme challenges no to do seven marathons consecutively on seven days in seven continents no mm-hmm. but but it's not it's not an easy undertaking and i suppose it's not cheap flying to seven continents preparing for the marathon uh, get gearing up etc i mean i i to do this uh, i suppose entails quite a big sum of money am i correct yeah um first the training no to train for one marathon you need at least three months to six months no so mm-hmm. to join this race you really have to be a vet- veteran marathoner because normally after marathon you need to rest at least a month per marathon no? mm. so you really have to have strong muscles um good training a lot of mileage because you have to run consecutively every day so during our we were initially 26 um three got injured and then five were not able to finish the antarctica leg because there was a a mild storm at that time it was too cold no so there are a lot of times now a lot of runners don't finish because they get injuries along the way mm. so it's really mind games training and using tactics no like going very slow maybe easy for the first few marathons then a uh, halfway when you know you feel you won't get injured anymore then you have to go for it now mm-hmm. the, okay. the package yeah. naman, there's a package um um that runners um, normally they have sponsors for this no like they run for charity organizations and then the package includes the plane fare all the meals included and then basically we just sleep naman on the plane eh? so mm-hmm. we don't stay in hotels so when we land we run right away okay Eh, eh, hindi ka ba nagkakaroon ng, uh, I don't know why you're the doctor and I'm the idiot or the ignoramus in the discussion. But yun, hindi ka ba nagkakaroon ng altitude sickness or adjustment issues? Because I remember, I, I used to be a scuba diver. And uh, I had this, uh, I observed that whenever, uh, they tell you, did you come in from a flight? Uh, or did you come from a high altitude? Kasi sasabihin nila, mag-rest ka muna ng 24 hours or 48 hours. Yan sa marathon, yung run, fly, run, fly. Doesn't it create complications? Yes, um, that's why there's a doctor with us the whole time. This mm-hmm. doctor checks us regularly sa plane, uh, blood pressure. Then he always tells us to take a lot of salt with all our meals to prevent mm-hmm. dehydration. There are some cases na he had to give IV fluids um, after the sec- second or third leg during the marathon. Me naman, my, my problem was Antarctica because we live in a tropical country and it's really, really hot, very warm. Hmm. Fortunately, my, my brother-in-law has a storage facility in Mandawe. So it's yeah. a free uh, city. That's, <laughs> I run there, place a treadmill there, and that's where I train for the Antarctica leg. No? I had to run it around minus 10 to minus 15 degrees with all my gear and everything. <laughs> Sa cold storage, yung bodega, yung ice plant, doon ka nag-training. Yes. You, uh, you placed a, a treadmill. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, okay ka rin. Ah. <laughs> no, I, I mean... Plan, you punch, yeah. I have to yeah, plan ahead because it's gone. I, mean, I don't, I don't want to get injured or quit in the middle of the challenge. Eh, na, di ba? I mean, all oh. the efforts there, I trained one year for this event. Okay, so uh, you've run seven continents, seven days. Uh, uh, I, I don't even know what you call that kind of a marathon. But uh, what is your next goal? Um, now, um, because of what happened, this was the last event, uh, February. And after a few oh. weeks, they closed the entire uh, marathon scene. No running events were already happening after that. So... All my races for this year were cancelled, so we'll see mm. next year what, what happens next. No? I've, yeah, but, um, yeah, but how do you stay in shape? I mean, that that was my other question uh, when when Willie Sung mentioned you to me. Sabiko, how would this guy continue to... How do marathoners stay in shape given the fact that all of us can't go out or most of us can't go out? Um, the, the, the thing now with runners is virtual marathons, no, like I did the London Marathon last month. Um, there's an app. You sign up for this. There's an app. And then mm-hmm. once you click on the app, you start the race. And then the app will track you, the mileage, the time. And then when you finish, and that's your registered time. And then they just mail you the, the medal. So 
Mm-hmm. I've done several virtual marathons already, but you do it lang in your treadmill or around your house or around the vicinity lang, as long as you can be tracked by satellite. Oh, well, I, I don't know about you. I, 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 if you can do it in your house, you probably have a house that is the size of a village. Kasi sa akin, pag ikaw nag-training ka dito, para ka nag-training for the, ano, for the Iger, Iger Pass, no? Puro hagdanan dito sa bahay ko. In any case, uh, so up lang yon, treadmill, talo-talo na, and you but how, how long um, is the normal, Uh, 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 range of a marathon on uh, virtual marathon. Ano yan? Uh, ilang kilometers yan? Um, one marathon is really 42.195 kilometers. That's the mm-hmm. standard distance for a marathon. So the, any runner can run between two to three hours up to seven hours. No, It depends. Mm-hmm. If you want to go fast, you want to go slow. It depends on your training as well. No? Mm-hmm. So Anywhere between that time to finish 42.195 kilometers. Okay. In any case, uh, please, uh, we only have a few minutes left. So allow me to shift topic naman from from being a uh, super marathon runner or marathoner. Uh, let's go naman to you being president of the Cebu, Cebu Doctors uh, Group of Hospitals. How is it in Cebu? Kasi... Diba, from from a really bad situation with COVID-19, they said Cebu has become a shining example of control, contact tracing, and reducing. Uh, what, your, what can you say about uh, COVID-19 and the response of Cebu physicians? Well, initially, like everyone else, since this is a novel virus, no, um, it, everything was new, so we didn't Initially, we didn't know what to do. From March, um, everyone was on panic mode. We only allotted few beds lang for COVID. Some hospitals, one bed lang, some five. And then for the first few months, now Manila was really, the census was going up. In Cebu naman, nothing was happening for the first three months. So mm. people were getting complacent. Then we went from ECQ back to MGCQ. People were going out, not wearing their, their masks and their um, having the social distancing. So June, July, wow, we had a really bad awakening. No? So yeah. all the hospitals were full. Um, there were no ICU beds anymore. Patients were lining up outside our ER. So immediately what I did, um, I opened a lot of wings, converted regular rooms to COVID ICUs, placed a lot of HEPA filters. I, made an, I constructed a tent, which I made into the clean ER because at that time, The non-COVID cases were very less because people were afraid to go to the hospital. Mm. So our regular ER now became the COVID ER. So we were able to accumulate more patients. Mm-hmm. The government now stepped in because the private hospitals lack nurses. So they sent nurses, government nurses from all over the besides Mindanao to Cebu. And they even paid the salary of these nurses to augment the did, private did, hospital. Did that help you? This is a lot of help, yeah. And then okay. IATF came here, sila, uh, Secretary Simato, and then the RATF, and then the military also came in, very strict already, and so we dropped down the cases. Now, now the cases in Cebu are very, very low already. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, uh, quick question, last minute. Uh, are you guys doing a lot of, ano yung tawag nila, compassionate uh, treatment options? Kasi uh, I've heard from other doctors who have been on the show, they've talked about hydroxychloroquine, they've talked about other medicines, and uh, uh, right now the DOH is, I think, looking for volunteers yata for Abigan. Ano bang experience yun dyan sa Cebu? Quick question, uh, answer na lang, Doc. Yes, um, fortunately, the, the presidential assistant for the Visayas, um, Secretary Michael Dino, provided us a lot of Japanese avigan during even during March and April. Mm. He was giving it away for free. So we were giving patients with that. No? This mm. avigan kasi an early cases 90 per Okay, uh, we're losing the signal. Nako, importante pa naman yung sagot ni Dr. Yong. I, I don't know if we will be able to get the Dr. Yong because we are on our last minute there. 
But uh, if not, I'll just ask uh, Dijo uh, to find out what uh, Dr. Yong was saying regarding Avigan, and I will uh, share it with all of you. Because it has been uh, approved for use, I think, I mean, I, if I remember correctly, it's in Japan. And uh, now they want to test it here in uh, the Philippines. So, eh, sabi ko nga, nag-aanap pa kayo ng tetes sa Cebu na uh, bumaha na yung abigan. Eh, yun, yun yung sinasabi kanina ni Dr. Yong Larazabal na uh, pinamigay yung abigan ng Presidential Assistant for the Visayas, si, ano ba yun, uh, Yusek ba yun, or Secretary Dean Yurao. Uh, and uh, apparently, it's uh, helping. So, in any case, uh, that's our show for today. Please, 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 Keep praying for all our kababayans, especially those in Bicol, Camarines Sur, in Rodriguez Rizal, at ibang lugar pa po. Let's pray for everyone. And uh, please uh, take care. Be careful kasi baka mamaya makuryente kayo dyan. Magingat po tayo. God bless all of you. See you tomorrow and uh, have a good day.